Welcome, everyone, to Mystery, a podcast about myths and history. I am one of your hosts, Bryant, with my permanent guest, Cammie. Hey, Cammie. Hey, Bryant. How are you? I'm good. I, I took your sickness. I, oh, you no. transferred it to we me. We haven't even seen each other. I know, but we podcast, and that's, you know, filthy. So, <laughs> uh, we have a really fun topic. Uh, it, it, it was, almost, I was afraid it was going to be like pretty spooky. Thankfully, it's not in that vein entirely because it was like, wow, we should have done this for Halloween. But we had a great uh, recommendation um, from, <clears throat> from YouTube. And if you've been listening to the show for a long time, we did an episode called uh, or on the topic of Sahir. And I recently uploaded it to YouTube, but it's a, it's an older episode. And what Sahir is, is basically uh, a Moroccan friend of mine, Rashid, had, had given us the idea. It's kind of like black magic, but in the Islamic world. And, and um, uh, you know, we, we found some articles that were related to Morocco, but it's featured in, in other places. But it sort of is sort of a byproduct of uh, – it's, it's the word for, for black magic or voodoo, essentially. There was, it was a fun episode. Some creepy stuff um, was in it and uh, gave, definitely gave us like voodoo uh, vibes and things like that. And I, after I had uploaded on YouTube recently, we had uh, someone who praised us for the episode, which I was really happy to hear, of course, um, Fadzil Mana, and he recommended that we look into this idea of uh, the quarine. Now, this is pretty cool. So I'll, I won't, we'll, we'll, we'll have the discussion in a minute. Kami's got a little story here. And so, uh, Cammie, will you please talk about the quarine? Yes, absolutely. So, I don't really have a source here. I did look at uh, Wikipedia mm -hmm. and some of the references there to okay. kind of get an idea, but um, I didn't find a like a cohesive story uh, anywhere, like a mythology yeah. type of situation, or like we did with Sahir, I couldn't find like an article either. Okay. So this is a Cami original. Cool. Yeah, that'll work. <laughs> we'll talk a little bit too about it all. So I think it'll work out. Alone. Finally alone. Work seems overwhelming after quarantine. Too many people, coworkers, customers, phone calls. It's nice to be alone. Shopping for dinner after work. Again, people. The supermarket is full at 5.30 when I leave the office. It's a good time to shop if you want to see everyone you know. I don't. But once I make it through the front door, take off my shoes, start dinner, feed the cat, I can breathe. I'm alone. Well, I've got the cat, Dexter. But time with him is not tedious or overwhelming. He's safe. He's home. But the later it gets, once the TV is off and I've moved on to watching TikToks, the less alone I feel, the less settled I feel, as if someone is just behind me. And the cat would confirm my suspicions his eyes wild and glowing in the dim light of the living room, looking just beyond me, his paw reaching in the air as if he wants to swat a fly. Or is it a wave hello? I know it's time for bed. I give Dex a cookie and head to the bathroom. I usually bother to turn on the light, but the bulb flickered and went out this morning, and I forgot to pick up a new one at the store. But it's fine, I'm fine, I'm an adult, no reason to feel uneasy in the dark. I grab my toothbrush. So far I've avoided the mirror, even while washing my face. But as soon as I close the cabinet, I catch an unintended glimpse, my face distorted in the dim room. I'm sure I'm not smiling, but my dark reflection grins back at me. And my cat, as I tear my eyes away from the grim horror staring at me, lunges forward in the air behind me, catching nothing but air. He growls and tears off to the bedroom. I'm alone. I, I am alone. Well, there's the cat. I sigh and, and look one more time in the mirror, my unsmiling face familiar again. Time for bed. Dexter awaits, already curled on the bed and purling, purring softly at the sight of me. I scratch his back and he leans into my hand and stretches, but suddenly a chill overcomes me and his purrs cease as he attacks my hand. Again he wildly looks over my shoulder. I get in bed and lay awake, feeling a presence. And just as I turn over to close my eyes, I see a figure beside me. It's me, my face, but with that wicked grin. I close my eyes and turn over, willing the fear away. Maybe we are never alone. Hey, that's great. So, yeah, that 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 is a really good representation of what the idea of the quarian is. Now, little disclaimer here: this is 
it's interesting to talk about this because it's it's a it's an essential part of Islam. It's it's mentioned in the Quran. There's a a, a text you know source right there. But it's interesting because I kind of get um, you know, we've talked about the banshee, the Irish banshee before, and how while it's not like in the Bible, it has like you know Irish Catholic connections in a lot of ways, um, as well as just Irish mythology in general. But that's sort of where I, I think the we're coming from in this place. And at first when I looked up the quarine, I thought it was, it was just a straight up uh, gin, which we've talked about. And, and, it, and it kind of is gin is sort of the word um, for uh, a, a demon, but gin don't necessarily have to be malicious, just like the quarine actually. And it's funny because after reading everything, the quarine from what I really can understand. So quarine literally means um, constant companion. And what I, after reading everything I read, I think about the old cartoon devil and an angel on your shoulder. That's, that's like basically it. Like I could end the show now. And that's, that's the best way, <laughs> honestly, that is the best way to explain what a quarian is. I think anyone would agree with me who, who is like a scholar in this. If, if you had to like put it in a nutshell, it's the devil and the angel. And that's, that's what it is. So Jin, which is where we get the word genie from. Uh, comes from the Middle East and West Asia. It, it, like I said, it's that that word for demon. We've talked about it in our stories of Sinbad and Arabian Nights, the 1001 Nights. Um, we've had done a couple of fun episodes on that, so we've covered that a little bit. Um, and much like a lot of those stories, those stories all encompass um, all the cultures of Islam. Don't necessarily have to be Islamic, but the pre-Islamic, um, you know, uh, Persia, all that. It sort of comes from this and. The quarine seems to be sort of this explanation for, uh, for, for, for your morality, for why people do bad things. We, we've also another throwback or callback to another episode, the Wendigo, the, the indigenous American, um, car, you know, a cannibalistic being, which is also the idea, uh, a psychological condition as well. That's where, where I, I go as well. The the quarine, um, it it it's it's just sort of the idea that we sort of are like a, a neutral people, and we've got this influence going from from sort of beyond. But the the sources that I use, so it's funny because apparently the quarine was featured in an episode of Supernatural. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, so supernatural.fandom.com had a little thing about it. I mean, I I just looked at it. I didn't really use it in my my top my, my uh, notes today but i just thought that was funny but it reminded me of how the witcher is inspired by folklore um, a lot of slavic fl folklore but all over the world as well um they in fact have a genie episode in for for the witcher series and i guess in the books as well but also it was cool too there was a um about islam.net which i know we've talked about like christian and jewish concepts like the golem um and golem and stuff and we've used sort of like religious sites as well so it's it's fun to see that uh there's a discussion there and 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 that's this this there's this great article on that website from this professor shahul hamid and he, he talks that's what he he essentially talks about so there's there's like evil uh jinn called the shaitan and then there's just kind of like like and they, they are implicitly designed to to make you make bad decisions and so you know you're we're all we're all like he explains that we're all given a quarine like uh, this this neutral idea that can be or our, our minds that can be affected by an outer source and so sometimes your quarine just wants to mess with you sometimes it doesn't um he kind of implicitly says that the prophet muhammad was was one of the only people to really convert his quarine to islam so he had this amazing feat of like actually getting his quarine to like follow the the lead and but but for other people it can just sort of happen um so it, it, it's really interesting to see that it has this specific religious connotation and again it makes me think of like early my sunday school episcopalian stuff you know th this influence that the devil can have on us you know like we're both in south carolina and the the religious like community here definitely like there's that old the devil made me do a quote you know that's where i that that's really where a lot of this comes from but it's just so cool that it has this thing when you, when you first google quarrying you'll see this image of a little girl <laughs> looking at a mirror or like looking at you and then there's like an evil like ring version of her in the mirror so there there's there is this fun and again it's featured on the tv show supernatural so there is this mythological aspect to it just like how again banshees right now 
banshees are featured in video games and D and and all that but like some grandma in ireland is yelling at someone because she needs them to go get a priest to get rid of the banshee in the attic you know <laughs> so for her it is a thousand percent real the banshee is screaming up there and she needs someone to do something about it or she or not i don't know so yeah this this is I, I definitely see why this is recommended for a follow-up to Sahir. Sahir also is mentioned in the Quran, has connections, but also is sort of this like local folklore sort of thing. And I, I it can it can mean a lot of different things for different people. Again, there's there's uh, in the the B series of jinn, jinn is sort of this encompass, encompassing word. They don't have to be malicious, but for the Quran, they they choose the human and then it's it to me it, i honestly feel like it's more like um we sort of have, it, it's it's mutual like if you if you're quarrying i don't think it's gonna make up its mind instantly but it kind of connects to you and then feeds off you and vice versa and you just kind of you know like either misery loves company or if you're a good dude it'll be a good dude that kind of thing so yeah i and and just th there's a multicultural example for this too um I mean, like I said, in Christianity, there's sort of the idea of the guardian angel. In Greek, there's the daimones, uh, sort of like, um, uh, do you have a good way of explaining that? Do you, are you familiar with that? No. What is it? It's Greek daimon. It's it's sort of like... Um, I've heard of this before, but I don't... Yeah. So the it's, it's a philosophical thing. It kind of came during the Hellenistic age. It's this idea of like um, uh, God like being these these mythical beings um that are wise that are connected to you in a way um it's also where the word uh it has a connection to the word genius as well of, of like another being um there's there's in many cultures this is idea of like whether you do something extraordinarily great or extraordinarily bad, you know, people having fits of insanity, essentially, where it's an it's an outer source affecting you and doing that. That was the that was the the you humoristic explanation as to why this dude decided to be crazy or, or had this episode of being crazy. You know, this was an ancient explanation and just kind of um, evolved over time. Um, in Wikipedia, too, it, it mentions, like, in the sea also, um, it talks about uh, the concept of um, bicameral mentality, uh, bicameral, you know, two sides of your mentality, um, uh, a familiar spirit, a doppelganger. So all these different concepts of someone, uh, sh you know, shadowing you in a mental state, affecting you. It has some deep roots, and the quarine is is essentially just the West Asian or Middle Eastern connection to that. So it, it predates Islam in, in in many ways. This idea, and uh, it's just really cool. But it's it's very um, real today, uh, and and it, and it's just wild. So I was really happy that we got to kind of look more into this. This is something we, of course, don't like you know, connect with, um, from, I'll, I'll even like, uh, going back to the devil and angel, the, the quote that really did it for me when I was reading the, um, about Islam.net thing, um, the, the professor that made that article, he quotes that the prophet said, every person has a shaitan and an angel with him as constant companions. So I believe that was in the Quran is, is what he's quoting. And so, um, again, yeah, think of it, the devil in the shoulder, uh, devil and the angel on your shoulder someone um sort of specifically trying to convince you to do bad stuff someone convincing you to to not and then them kind of fighting in your head where you're this sort of neutral state and you've just got to decide what you want to do so very nice topic cami that was a great story it's very Thank it's very you. subtle I, <clears throat> and that's how i see it too it's it's not as always like these two things are hammering you but it's this sort of just this daily like yeah i can have a donut no, I shouldn't have done <laughs> stuff like that. You know, yeah, I should flip him off because he cut me off on the road. No, nah, maybe I shouldn't. So, yeah, Quarin, uh, um, Q A R E E N. I will admit, I thought this might have been like a joke, and that this was like a, a joke about like Karens because it kind of like <laughs> looks like I. I literally thought I was gonna be like like this was like the Arabic word for Karen. Like <laughs> I was just like, oh god, it's gonna be about like really picky people, but no. It's it, it was a pretty cool idea. And and I going into it, I thought like when I saw that little creepy girl, I was like, oh, it's gonna be like 
this should be for next Halloween. But then I was like, no, this is a, a larger concept. Again, you can look in the Greek daimon, daimon D-A-I-M-O-N, and doppelganger, shadow thing. So it's it's really cool. This is There's a lot of cultures. I mean, every culture sort of has this connection to it. And, and if we want to go into the explanation, you know, when someone does suffer from some sort of mental illness, they have a crazy episode or something like that. That's how you explain it. So it's just like how we get the word for spirits. You know, it makes you act funny, that kind of thing. I think that covers everything, though. Um, Cami, thank you for your story. Uh, that was a, a great way, I think, to cover it. Um, thank you on YouTube, Fedzilmana, for your recommendation. I hope you enjoyed this episode, um, if you can watch it. And let us know if you guys have anything else that you think we should cover. This is always really interesting to go off of the normal beaten path of standard Greek and all that, which, you know, we'll talk about anything. So let us know. I think that's it, though, Kimmy. Would you like to add anything? No, I'm good. All right, everyone. Well, uh, yeah, it's November now, so we've got some fun stuff leading up to the holidays. But as always, just let us know. Mystery at gmail.com. Mystery has an IE. You can see it on YouTube. It's spelled right up above my beautiful balding head. And let us know if you have any topics. But otherwise, we will see you next time. Oh. oh.